Ron Rivera, Washington football team head coach, talking about Taylor Heineke's performance after the game. Heineke joined the NFL Network on field desk and said he has earned the privilege of being the starting quarterback for the balance of the year. So buy or sell, Taylor Heineke has proved, Miles, that he should start for the rest of the season. Sell? In what world? Come on. You know, you don't get to throw an interception in the four, in a four-minute offensive situation and say, yeah, I, I mean, I, although what else is he supposed to say? I don't know. But, like, come on. Like, absolutely not. We're asking me the question? No, no, no. Just no. I don't know. I just – I watched those quarterbacks last night, and, oh, my goodness. I just – they left a lot to be desired. And this, that, no. Just no, no. I think there's a way that he could thread that needle without saying I should be the starter the rest of the year. Look, I'm going to play as long yeah. as they want me to play. I'm going to play as long as they right. need me to play. And if and when Ryan Fitzpatrick is healthy, I'm playing at a level where the team decides to keep me on the field, then I'll, I'm, I'll defer to whatever decision the coach has made. I, I think it does seem a little presumptuous and a little bit kooky, frankly, for him to think he's earned the job from now until week 17 or week 18, as the case may be. But when you have a guy like Chase Young – telling the world that Taylor Heineke could start for any other team in the league. Any other? No, maybe, maybe I still couldn't find the one that he could start for, but uh, I know he can't start for every other team in the league. He, here's the reality for Heineke. He hasn't played enough for defenses to have enough film to effectively game plan against him. Once they have four, five, six full games of tape, then they start with a more strategic, here's what he likes to do, we need to take that away. Watch this formation. Here's what he does. Here's which way he rolls out of that set. Here's which way he rolls out of this set. Look at how he goes through his progression. Look at what he does with the ball. All of those things become part of that body of film study where you try to crack a code on a guy and throw things at him that will rattle him. He's still several weeks away from that happening. So if he keeps playing well, hey, the, the days of players at any position not losing their jobs due to injury are over. If the replacement comes in and does well, he's going to stay until he doesn't do well. And that's just the way it is. So, look, Heineke played well enough to win. They easily could have lost. The Giants lost that game more than Washington won it. So let's just give it a week at a time and see what they do next time around. All right. How about Sammy Watkins talking about the Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes rivalry? We mentioned this earlier. Let's have a listen to Watkins as he talks about whether or not there really is something going on here with Mahomes versus Jackson. We make a big deal out of Lamar versus Mahomes. You know those both those guys. How do you feel like do they view it that way? And what are their thoughts on that kind of semi rivalry, if you call it that? Um, I think those guys definitely view it that way. Um, you can say you you're not, but the world is watching two of the best, youngest MVPs in the league, and um, very talented guys. So I'm definitely looking at it that way. Like man, Lamar need to win. Um, you know, he's been doing a great job in this league with just how he's been carrying himself as a teammate and as a, a guy that just do the right things off the field. So I just think, um, you know, he, it's time for him to take that next hump and, and try to get a win. Um, and I'm, I'm, I hope this team and we prepare and the coach prepare to do our best to try to, um, you know, will a win for the organization and, and him. And him. Not going to be easy to do, but uh, are we buying or selling the notion that Mahomes versus Jackson is the best current quarterback rivalry? And if not, which one is? You know, it's interesting, Mike, because there have been so many quarterbacks who have just moved around the league in the last year or two. I mean, you've got guys that have retired. You've got guys that have moved to different teams. It's kind of hard to say that there's any real quarterback rivalries right now in the league. I mean, would you say like Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson? Because they're almost two of the longer tenured quarterbacks that we've got right now. I, I mean, there just aren't that many. Jackson, Lamar Jackson and Ben Roethlisberger would be another that I guess I would nominate just because they play in the same division and we know that those two teams are bitter rivals as well. But it just, there aren't that many good quarterback rivalries yet. 
But at the same time, it's kind of like, well, can it be a rivalry until the other guy wins? Because Patrick Mahomes is 3-0 and against Lamar Jackson. And I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of think of it like Ohio State and Michigan right now. You know, that's not really a real rivalry anymore because Ohio State just wins every year, which as an Ohio native, I'm perfectly okay with. But like, can we still call it a rivalry? I don't know. Well, and we can't call it a rivalry, as we said earlier, until they meet in the postseason. That hasn't happened right. yet. They haven't met at a time when the stakes are the absolute highest. Look, I think the best quarterback rivalry right now, even though they're not going to play this season, is Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Because we saw what a great game it was between the two of them in the NFC Championship, how Rodgers tried to lead the Packers back to victory. And we hope, I think, unless you're you know, an ardent fan of the Saints or the Rams or another team that would get bumped out in the process— I would like to see Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady again in the postseason. They won't meet in the regular season, unfortunately. But uh, speaking of Tom Brady, here he is on the possibility of playing until the age of 50. Can Tom Brady play until 50 years old? Wow. Seems to be a really hot question lately. Can Tom Brady play till 50? Like, 50 years old. Yeah, 50. 50. You're 44, that's six more years. I think, I mean, I don't find it so difficult. And plus in the Florida, it's kind of a retiree state. So I feel like I can play and then just glide into retirement. I think I can, I think it's a yes. I don't know why he was confused about the prospect of playing until 50. What, what else would it be? He didn't know what they meant. I think they're trying to be funny, and as yes, we, they are. As no, as we I'm have not, learned, Mike. as we hey. have learned, com comedy is hard. Miles, I've learned oh, the hard I'm, way. Comedy. is I'm hard. I'm certainly no comedian. Yeah. Are we buying or selling Tom Brady playing to the age of fifty? I'm I'm gonna sell it, but I'm not gonna sell it because of his ability. I'm gonna sell it because Giselle's gonna finally be like, dude, I've had enough of you being gone every single fall. I like come home and, you know, be my husband and be a father to our children a little bit more, man. I, I think that I, because, look, there's no reason to think that he can't. I, I just every single time he just seems to continue to perform. And I don't know when it's going to fall off a cliff. We all know that when it falls off, it seems to fall off quickly. But I, I do expect him to win another Super Bowl before he retires. I'm buying he's playing until 50. I oh, am. Oh, boy. Because the arm is going to be there into his 50s. He has figured out how to avoid contact. You avoid contact, you avoid injury. He'll do that, get rid of the ball, and curl up like an armadillo to avoid getting hit. And I don't blame him for it. you got to be available for the next snap. But I think he can pull it off. I think he can. And I think that moving to Tampa has been the thing that has reduced the pressure from within the family for him to stop playing. I think they love it in Tampa. He's found the right balance. And he's doing something unprecedented. And and I don't think it's going to be repeated. I don't think we're going to have this crop of young guys playing into their mid to late 40s. He was asked yesterday what advice he would have to young quarterbacks who would like to have a long career in the NFL. And his first two words were, good luck. Good luck indeed. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.